All right, the Starbucks Workers Union was formed May 17, 2004 in New York City. Baristas then came together and organized with the industrial workers of the world for more money, stable scheduling, easier access to more affordable health care, and to pay at least fair trade prices for all of its coffee. In response, Starbucks initiated a vicious and relentless union-busting campaign. On the third anniversary of the union's formation, baristas at this location declared their membership in the IWW Starbucks Workers Union and set forth the list of demands. Along with our union membership, we publicly announced that the union was filing unfair labor practice charges with the National Labor Relations Board because of Starbucks' aggressive anti-union activity here in Grand Rapids. The NRB began an investigation and announced last week that they had enough evidence to issue three complaints against this Starbucks store, and the three charges are as follows. These are how we wrote them. Historically, the first charge, historically store employees have had access to the store bulletin board after an employee posted documents related to the union, management announced a new policy that access to the board was restricted to company-sponsored notices. The second charge, as we wrote it, was that management threatened employees with discharge and unspecified reprisals if they engaged in union activities. The third charge, as we wrote it, was that they failed to uphold the settlement agreement they reached with the IWW in 2006. That settlement was made with the NLRB in New York City after baristas there filed charges against Starbucks union busting. Among other things, Starbucks had to rehire two baristas fired for organizing and give them back pay. Starbucks anti-union activity didn't end with that settlement though and the union is currently involved in a trial in New York City over 30 charges of unfair labor practices and wrongfully terminating six organizers. The union in Grand Rapids is represented by Roger Webb of Webb, Engelhart and Fernandez. Starbucks has retained Grand Rapids corporate law firm of Varnum, Rittering, Schmidt, and Howlett. If Starbucks is not ready to settle today, the union is fully prepared to meet them in court in front of an administrative law judge. These charges in Grand Rapids and the ones in New York City rip the mask off the socially responsible image that Starbucks markets and sells to customers. The truth is, is that Starbucks is a billion dollar corporation that pays its employees and its coffee farmers poverty wages. Also, only 42% of its workforce is covered by the company's health insurance. That number is much lower than Walmart's, who is routinely criticized for this. When baristas come together and assert our legal right to organize, Starbucks fires, threatens, and intimidates us. But we won't be intimidated anymore. What has happened here in Grand Rapids should be a loud message to all baristas, not only in Grand Rapids and West Michigan, but also in the country and the world, that through our collective action, we can demand our rights. Baristas are organizing globally, and together we can have a voice at our jobs. Today was the day that Starbucks had to announce whether they're going to settle the charges or fight the charges, in which we would go in front of a court uh, like they're doing in New York City. Um, they found out we were having a press conference. They decided to wait until 4 p.m. to announce whether they were going to settle or not. So that decision will still come today. If they settle, that means that they'll have to admit wrongdoing and post in all stores which are affected by Region 7, which includes Detroit and, and Michigan and, and uh, some lower parts of Ohio or upper parts of Ohio and Indiana. They'd have to make posts at all the stores saying that they did break the law and that they would not break the law anymore on the three charges, uh, such as uh, wrongfully terminating people and intimidating people for being in the union. They would have to admit they did, that they did wrongdoing. Now, if they decide to fight the charges, which I don't think they'll do because they've been going through a months long trial in New York City, then we will go in front of an administrative law judge and we're prepared to do that with the evidence that we have. Uh, and if we were to win that, then it would be down in the record books that uh, Starbucks at this location engaged in unfair labor practices and uh, it would uh, continue forever and it would help us also in uh, the organizing, showing the other baristas that we don't have to be intimidated, we can assert our rights through uh, coming together through street actions and uh, through protests and also through the courts, we can uh, uh, organize, we can win better pay. There's been wage increases, three so far since the union drive began in New York City. Uh, also stable scheduling at this location. They, uh, once they found out there was organizing going on, they gave us all uh, uh, availability forms to fill out when we wanted to work. Now consistently everyone gets the shifts and the hours that they want at this store. That only came about after organizing and we were talking about organizing. So what they can't do with bribing us, they turn around and threaten and intimidate us. So uh, 
the charges will be decided today. Uh, Media Mouse, uh, hopefully, will have uh, an announcement on there, and uh, it'll be spread throughout the world at that point. So today, we stand in solidarity with all our sisters and brothers in New York City, in Chicago, in Maryland, and all the other stores around the globe that are organizing and, and just waiting for a critical number of uh, employees before they go public. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Yeah. Out. All right. Afraid of the dudes and the kings and the company finks and the deputy sheriffs who made the raids don't show it to the union hall when the meeting it was called and when the stools they sat around she always stood her. oh you can't scare me i'm sticking to the union i'm sticking to the union i'm sticking to the union oh you can't scare me i'm sticking to the union i'm sticking to the union to the day I die.